Hi, thank you for joining me today. I came across some information about how a narcissist's brain functions that stopped me in my tracks and I want to share it with you to see what you think. Before I get into that, I want to say that I'm new to YouTube. Tomorrow will be three months and the amount of love you guys have shown me has brought me to tears. Thank you so much and thank you for all of your personal shares. I think it helps everyone when you share. I'm not a doctor or a therapist. I have a certification in life coaching and I have life experience. There's a piece of me in all of my videos. These videos are not gonna be a one size fits all. Take the parts that resonate with you and put to the side the parts that don't. My intention is to provide information for people who have been through this trauma in hopes to help in the healing process. So I found these articles that stopped me in my tracks and they talk about the narcissistic brain and how it functions. There are links to different articles in the description for you to read through yourselves. I'm hoping this information will help reinforce your healing. Being raised in a narcissistic home, common questions that you may ask yourself are, how can my own parents treat me like this? How can my parents not love me? These questions tend to come from a place of deep pain and hurt. I think these articles can help answer these questions. This article I found from Psych Central talks about researchers and Dr. Stephen Rupke, a professor in the Department of Psychiatry from Berlin, Germany, who performed brain MRI scans on 34 individuals. 17 of them suffered from the narcissistic personality disorder and the other 17 were not suffering from the disorder. They compared the scans and found that pathological narcissists have less gray matter in their cerebral cortex called the left anterior insula. This part of the brain that is tied to empathy and is also known to involve cognitive function and regulation of emotion. The gray matter is responsible for providing nutrients and energy to neurons. These researchers also discovered that the amount of empathy a person is able to show is related to the amount of gray matter they have found in this portion of the brain. So for me, that would explain why there's different severities of narcissism. Dr. Rupke states, these results are important because they stick very well with our theories of narcissistic personality disorder. Sommers, Krusmark, and Ronningstam found that clinical presentation of NPD suggests that empathy is not simply deficient, but it's dysfunctional, with con which contributes to not understanding the responses or emotions of others. Dr. Roy Lee performed studies that found NPD to be marked with increased oxidative stress in the blood and is connected to interpersonal hypersensitivity, which means conversations with loved ones often end in misunderstandings, conflict, and hurt feelings. It's a molecular imbalance, and these imbalances create stress that goes through the brain and the body. They found that oxidative stress is related to expressions of shame. David Chester did research and found that MPD struggles to have rewarding thoughts and feelings about themselves, having low self-esteem. They found that this involves an excessively high focus on the self in combination with an extremely low regards for others which includes engaging with others' viewpoints. When having an argument, they tend to not be able to see your side of it. Researchers Twang, Campbell, Tracy, and Robbins found that MPD is associated with increased feelings of anger and aggression, which is their self-protection responses that internalizes blame onto others. NPD involves increased reaction to social exclusion, being especially sensitive to others' evaluations of them. Reinhard found that people with NPD, even in everyday low threat situations, showed their stress emotions to be higher. The study found they have high neediness and vulnerability underneath the arrogance they portray. So they have hypersensitivity, lack of empathy, cognitive function is impaired, which could explain why they're so forgetful and struggle to have rewarding thoughts and feelings about themselves. And which to me could explain why they're always going after the other person to make them feel good about themselves, to give them that attention that they feel they deserve. Also, I think this could explain why everyone says, don't engage with a narcissist. There isn't any amount of communication that will give them the ability to have empathy, to put themselves in your shoes, to understand your feelings, 
or to help them understand the damage they've caused to you. So it makes sense to me that as an adult later in life who goes back to try to build a relationship with a narcissistic parent, thinking maybe things will have changed and be better, they find that it doesn't work and maybe even find it to be worse than it was before. Their brain is still unable to process empathy. They're still not concerned with how their behavior affects others, and they still have a high need to make themselves the priority. Your parents weren't able to give you a healthy connection, and for me, this evidence shows why they can't. I'm talking about this today in the hopes that you can take this information and knowledge to use it to reinforce your understanding that it wasn't you. If your parents were narcissistic, they didn't treat you this way because you were unlovable. It had nothing to do with you and had everything to do with the way their brain functions. If you are living with the beliefs about yourself that you're not good enough, that no one will like you, that you're unlovable, re-explore these thoughts and beliefs about yourself and help to shift your mindset, to know that none of that is true. If you are living in fear that everyone is going to hurt you eventually, you're always looking for evidence that someone is gonna stab you in the back. Realize that not everyone is like this and you know better than most what red flags look like so that you have the ability to weed out people who show you these traits and to find trust for people who are not like this. Grieve the loss for not being able to form healthy connections to your parents. Something that really helped me heal was detaching from these beliefs of not being good enough and detaching from the idea that I'm supposed to be close with my parents. Give yourself permission to have peace around not having a relationship to your parents. This information doesn't make their behavior okay or acceptable. Maybe it can help you to change your mindset if you're stuck to know that you are worthy, you are lovable just for existing alone, not because of how successful you are or what you can provide or how much you can give. Reparent yourself. If you were your own loving, healthy parent, what would you want for yourself? Learn about healthy boundaries to protect yourself from the continued abuse. I hope this helps. Again, please read through these articles. Let me know what you think. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you like my content. I love you all.